Hey everyone, I'm Gardner, the Linux Gamer. Last Friday, I asked the question, are Steam Machines dead? As I was working on researching that video, it started to get extremely long. I decided that video should answer the question and I should leave my opinions to another video. And with scary stuff like this making headlines, I feel like this video might be more relevant than ever. Consider this list an open letter to Valve. Here we go. Valve, I love you, but sometimes your decisions are inexplicable. When Steam Machines first launched, there were 15 or so options in the lineup. They were pre-built computers ranging in price between $499 to somewhere in the range of $5,000. So truthfully, who were you marketing to? It wasn't the PC gaming enthusiasts since they're likely to build their own machine and the low end prices were matched with equally low end hardware and you weren't aiming to convert console gamers since having such a variety of hardware and price points was intimidating, even to the experienced PC buyer, let alone the guy who struggles to choose between a 500 gigabyte and a one terabyte model Xbox. So let me tell you who will buy the machines I'm gonna help you build, console gamers. You're going to compete with the Xbox and the PlayStation, and here's how you'll win. Number six, play to your strengths. Get it, play? <laughs> Steam machines are built on Linux. There are a ton of Linux games available right now, and the majority of them, they're indie games. So what should you do? Well, I'll tell you. Build hype around Tacoma, or Ukulele, or any of the other high quality indie games that are coming out soon. And then you slap a first on Steam Machines graphic on those games trailers. And if you're still opposed to timed exclusivity, make deals with indie developers that the Linux version will have a simultaneous launch with the Windows release, and then you foot the marketing bill designed for Steam Machines. I firmly believe that the future of gaming is indie gaming. And if you solidify SteamOS as the indie gaming console, you'll be ahead of the game. But you're also a developer, so develop something. Give the people what they want. Ricochet 2, or something. Number five, hide the Linux desktop better. I'm sure this will probably be a controversial stance for me to take, but plenty of people, including myself, have borked the SteamOS installs countless times because we dug into the underlying OS. In my opinion, there should not be a simple checkbox that gives end users access to the GNOME desktop, because people with little to no Linux experience will mess up their machine by following some poorly written online guide and not be able to recover. So perhaps enabling the Linux desktop should require more steps. Steps that might seem overwhelmingly complex to the average player, but that are trivial to a Linux user. Maybe there should be a setting in SteamOS that enables remote logins, which gets automatically disabled after five minutes. From there, you can use your desktop or a laptop to SSH into your Steam machine, and then you can edit a text file that enables the Linux desktop. Or maybe you have to install GDM through the package manager, whatever. Problem solved. And then you don't have the average consumer ruining their SteamOS installs, but still satisfy us neckbeards. Well, I mean, I just trimmed this portion, but uh, you know what I mean. Number four, multimedia. Multimedia is a problem on Steam machines. My friend EG made a great video about that, and you should definitely go watch it and subscribe to his channel. Though I do take exception to a few of the points he made in his video, in general, he's right. And I can hear you saying, but everyone has a smart TV or a streaming stick or blah, blah, blah. And you're not wrong, but the other boys have it too, and so should you. And you should do it better. Here's how. Step one, integrate Chromecast. Yeah, you heard me, Chromecast. Being able to cast anything to a Steam machine would be killer. Music, yep. Netflix, check. Websites, you got it. In my opinion, that would decimate the competition. Step two, streaming. You need to have an easy way to allow people to stream their games to Twitch or YouTube. And more importantly, it needs to be done with minimal performance loss. There are ways to do this, and the hardware is there with PC graphics cards. But the software on Linux, it's not there yet. You've done a great job with streaming on the Steam Link, and that proves to me that you can do this. So now it's time to open up outside the Steam streaming service and let people stream where they actually want to stream. Number three, solve the controller problem. I have a lot of hope on this front because you've already started solving this issue, but there are still many more hurdles to clear. The recent addition of the PS4, Xbox, and generic controllers to the Steam controller configuration is an excellent first step, and that's great, but there's still some more problems here. You need to figure out a clear and concise way of assigning or reassigning controllers to players, as in which controller is player one, player two, and so on. This has to work across all the different brands of controllers. There's never been a console 
with wireless controllers that has done this elegantly, ever. And you can be the first. You also need to hide the OS level inputs from games. Since every once in a while, I'll find a game where a single DualShock 4 appears as player one and player two, one from the OS and one from Steam's controller handler. Fixing this won't be enough if it's not system-wide and universal. If one game doesn't work, then you haven't done your job. It's not impossible. You control the Steam runtime. Just go ahead and fix this. It's extremely important. Number two, ditch the name Steam Machine and relaunch with your Pixel or your Nexus. Look, the Android-like approach that you guys took with your last batch of Steam Machines failed. The problem was that there was too much choice and no clear winner. I know you propped up the Alienware Steam Machine as THE Steam Machine, but honestly it was confusing. Seriously. Because there was the Alienware Alpha which came out with Windows, and then there were three or more variants of the Alienware Steam Machine with different hard drives and even processors. Look, though I'm still a fan of SteamOS and Steam Machines, there's not much goodwill for the brand at this point. Number one, get involved and drop the laissez-faire attitude. If I walked into a GameStop and it was littered with Unity asset flips and games that didn't perform well enough to actually play, I'd be completely turned off from ever wanting to buy anything. I mean, granted, who really wants to buy anything from GameStop anyway? But still, now I'm not saying that Steam is brimming with rubbish, but I'd say that like three to 5% of the games in my personal Steam library either won't boot or are otherwise unplayable. And that's an intolerably high number. What should you do about that? I say, get involved. Create a grant process that encourages indies to make their Linux client the most well-optimized and buttery smooth version of their game. You need to hire Ethan Lee, Ryan Gordon, or any of the other talented folks with the explicit job title of Linux ambassadors. They go out and find developers who want to bring their game to Linux and help them do a great job of it. Stick a badge on the page of any game that the Linux ambassadors help bring to the platform. An initiative like this will give Linux the boost it needs to truly become the future of gaming. Sincerely, Gardner, the Linux Gamer. So those are some of the ways I think Valve needs to fix their platform. But what do you think? Did I miss anything? Let me know down in the comments or tweet at me at the Linux Gamer. You can also support the work that I do over on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. Thanks for watching.